All right, so it's been a bit since the last video, and most of you guys have been asking, you know, like, is everything okay? Where have I been? Where are the videos? And really, I just decided to take a little bit of a, a, a break, a refresher, and at the same time, also think of some new videos, do some things behind the scenes, and also I had um, a little thing that I had to do with YouTube that uh, I just couldn't upload for a day or two just to make sure that everything was okay. So, like... Most of you guys were pretty supportive. Most of you guys were wondering where I was. Is everything okay? And that's cool. Some of you guys got mad that I wasn't uploading, which I I don't get why some of you guys would get mad about it. Like, I don't get that. But for the most part, it was just I needed a little bit of a refresher. When you upload basically the same video or the same type of video every day for like a year, you know, it kind of adds up. It does get a little stale on my end. And I took this time to kind of think about how... I could come up with some some new ideas, some new videos, some exciting stuff, and so that's what I wanted to do. But um, yeah, we're back. We're gonna be back in full force. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We're gonna be doing a career sim for who I think is the most exciting player in baseball right now. Pop is making his case for one of the best players in baseball, and that's Fernando Tatis Jr. So of course, guys, if you do enjoy today's video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We hit 30,000 subs, which, you know what, is amazing. Like, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the continued support. And uh, I can't wait to see what we can do in the future with this channel. So, with that being said, if you guys have any other video ideas, let me know in the comment section down below. And let's get into today's video. All right, so the roster that I use is on screen now. And uh, really what we do with this is we just let the CPU handle everything and see where it takes us. I mean, I'll take care of... I don't really want to get involved. I really just want to see how the career of Fernando Tatis Jr. plays out. So if he gets traded, he gets traded. If he doesn't, he doesn't. If he stays with the team for the entirety of his career, that's awesome. If he signs with another team in the future, we'll follow his career path as we go um, forward. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade the trade slider down just a little bit because I don't want the CPU to just go absolutely insane with trades where we just lose every single player possible. So I'm going to leave it there for now and then let's get into it. So of course we're here for the career of Fernando Tatis Jr. 21 years old as we hop into this 89 overall. So obviously he is a higher rating, but when you think about what he's doing at this point in the in baseball, like He's easily one of the best shortstops in baseball and make it a name for himself as one of the best players in baseball. So here are his attributes as we head into it. There we are. I mean, look at that hitting. Those hitting stats are through the roof. You've got the fielding, the arm strength, the reaction, the speed, the stats for his career. Only a half the season. And obviously with what's going on in baseball now, he's playing less games in this season than he did last year, which is crazy to think about. Pretty you know, his contract is pretty good. Plenty of years of control left on him. And then, of course, as we look at his quirks to start, you guys will we'll, we'll kind of take a peek to see if he gets anything else as we go forward or if he loses any of them. But this is what we have to start. And I mean, this card or not this card, but this player looks like he's going to be insane. So I'm really interested to see how it pans out. We're just going to leave it as is. As you can see, CPU is handling everything. It's all on auto. Let's start simming the seasons. So the first season with the Padres, you know, it's it's an interesting one. No playoffs, which is disappointing. In real life, it looks like the Padres are really pushing to win this year. I know they've acquired Trevor Rosenthal. They've also acquired Mitch Moreland as I've just started recording this. So it's pretty crazy to think about. And uh, obviously, we're not here to really focus on the Padres, but... Um, We'll, we'll take a look at Tatis, who hit 258 on the year, 22 home runs. Okay, 41 doubles, 258 average, like I mentioned, a 342 on base percentage and an 809 OPS. So I was expecting a little bit better. You can see that his overall has gone up a little bit, which is, you know, some things have gone up, some things have gone down. You know, it's interesting to see that, you know, most of the hitting stats went down, which is not what you want to see he's angry for some reason doesn't have the right coaching contracts and his individual performance is still not where it wants to be but um okay so no playoffs any league leading stats it doesn't look like it you know they were fourth in the division so clearly they're not gonna gonna you know i mean they were a little bit in the playoff mix but not too much and um that's pretty disappointing so year one 
nothing no wards no league leading stats uh no crazy trades that i found um that the cpu made or anything trading down the trade slider really kind of tones down how much how many trades are made otherwise i feel like there's a trade made like every three days so with that being said what i'm gonna what i am gonna check is the training to make sure that they're not just training some random stat for tatis and i'll handle the training because sometimes they'll they'll just go to like speed or something that really doesn't need to be trained for a player so what i'll do is i'll look at that but otherwise, we're going to hop into this first season after we see who wins the World Series and go from there. So the Phillies defeat the Astros. Wow. Okay. So let's head into the postseason. Let's see how everything plays out. Let's see what season two does, if anything crazy happens like that. But the main thing is we're going to start, you know, kind of hopping around just kind of the main highlights of his career. Do we see if he wins an MVP? Does he win a World Series? Maybe we hop into the World Series, see how he performs in that final game. Things like that. So I'll see you guys at the next checkpoint in Fernando Tatis' career. All right, so we're in year four. I believe this is year four. And this is the first time the Padres have made the postseason. So I actually want to take a look at the team, see how everything kind of transpired, see if we have any league-leading stats for Tatis, maybe an award or two, and just kind of see how everything looks. So 89 and 73, so definitely a wild card team. And... uh Okay, so the Reds were actually pretty good as well. You know, the Marlins won the East. And there's the rest of the league. So, okay. Pretty interesting. We took the number one spot in... Or the Padres took the number one spot in the wild card. Any league leading stats? No. Okay. Tatis is 11th for batting average. 8th for hits. And uh, let's see if anything else kind of pops up for him. Not for home runs or anything. RBIs, he was ninth. Okay, so he had a he had a decent year. It looks like. See if he was in the race for any of these um, awards. Colin Moran won MVP last year. That's wild. Okay, so it doesn't look like he has any any awards or anything like that, which is pretty sad to see. But you guys can see the Padres as we are in this season right now. A couple changes for sure. You know, Arias, Garrett Cooper's in the mix. You got Josh Naylor playing left over Tommy Pham in some situations. Okay, so yeah, the team has definitely changed a bit. So Tatis is a 96 overall. His hitting stats are still kind of going down a little bit, which is worrisome. Um, his fielding stats look amazing. You look at those 85 fielding, 98 arm strength, 89 reactions, 82 speed. His career stats through this season is they're looking pretty good. They're really nice. You know, he's hit around 30 home runs the last couple years. Averaged around 90-ish RBIs this year. He kind of popped off a little bit. And so far, he had a pretty good year. You know, this is probably, I would say this is probably his best year of his career in terms of just all-around stats. You know, average, OPS, triples, home runs, all that stuff. You could say this season, but that was only half a year. So this one, you kind of get like the full 162-game season and you get a look at it. So he's about to hit free agency this year. You know, his contract, I think this was his last year of arbitration. He might have one more year of arbitration, but um, you can see his morale. He's going to get paid big money, and I'm kind of interested to see if the Padres bring him back or where he'll, where he'll take the next step in his career. Looking at quirks, you can see hitting machine, quick reflexes, cannon, first pitch hitter, day player, pressure cooker, situational hitter, rally monkey, and breaking a ball hitter. So he has added some quirks as well. Okay. So, so far, so good in the career of Tatis. I would say man, he's having a pretty solid career. What are we at? Like four and a half seasons, kind of. Um, over 100 home runs. Hit totals approaching 1,000. So, I'm liking what I'm seeing through, you know, these past couple seasons. Still 24 years old. And uh, we'll see how it plays out. So, as we move forward in this this wild card game and uh let's just let's quick manage this see how it goes you know might as well get a little bit involved so that we can kind of take a little peek and see how he does we'll just let chris paddock play he's at the third spot in the lineup so taking on the phillies as we move forward he hits a single there so you like to see that okay as we continue to go forward with it bases are loaded he's not up yet is he gonna get in a bat this inning he is the bases are still loaded and it looked like the runner was thrown out going home so it, he got the hit 
because he's two for two. He got an RBI as well, so that's good to see. So I think it was one RBI. I think that's what happened there, but at least he got... He got the hit. He got the RBI. So, so far, so good. Strikes out there, but two for three on the day. You know what? That's that's a pretty solid outing so far. And uh, it's looking like things are going pretty well. I didn't turn Universal DH on this time. I guess I could have done it again, but I felt like let's just leave the Universal DH as we move through this. So, things are getting a little dicey. 3-3 three, three ball game. Maybe left you know, Paddock in a little too long. Bryce Harper goes lefty lefty against Zach Britton. So, uh oh, things are looking kind of sketchy, kind of sketchy indeed. Let's go to Pagan here and then pinch hit. We'll go Tommy Pham against Sir Anthony Dominguez. He flies out, Arias is out, and that's the season for the, the Padres. Wow, okay. And it was well, it was Bryce Harper's home run, right? Lefty, lefty, ended it. Wow. Okay. That's a tough one. Tatis, I think, went two for four, two for five. Had an RBI. The Marlins defeat the Indians. We got to take a look at the, uh, the rosters as I accidentally moved forward more so than I wanted to. But I still kind of want to take a look at that Marlins team that's winning a World Series here. Where are they? Um, who is this guy? Definitely someone that they drafted looks insane. You got VR Dickerson Daniel Vogel box popping off Brian Anderson. Hey, so that's just a, that's a pretty solid team and that's a young team as well um, A good mix of young and old and I'm also intrigued to see their pitching staff and um, Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good team. That's a pretty solid team. All right So I mean that's the team to kind of beat right now a lot of players are entering free agency it looks like we're going to have one more year of control with Tatis. So let's get into it. I just wanted to show you guys since we made the postseason. Still no awards. No, not even a gold glove. No silver sluggers. Nothing like that. He's led the league once and that was for triples. I didn't feel like showing you guys that. I felt like that really wasn't anything to show. But this is kind of a quiet career sim so far. Hopefully the Padres start picking it up. Hopefully they start making the postseason so we can start showcasing Tatis off in the postseason or we're just gonna have to take a look and see where he goes in the future. So that's a quick little check-in. Let's see how it plays out. So back-to-back -back years in the postseason for the Padres. Pretty similar records as well. So I'm kind of interested to see maybe they made a couple more moves or anything like that. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to the moves in terms of what notifications I'm getting. I'm more just trying to get through the seasons and more focus on what Tatis is doing. But it looks like the West is a powerhouse of a division right now. And the rest of the league kind of looks like this. So it's actually pretty competitive. You know, a lot of low 90s win teams are in the postseason. Again, no league leading stat for Tatis, which is pretty disappointing. You know, it actually, I don't even see him on any of these. Oh, there he is. Home runs. 35. Okay, that's good to see. Is he in the mix for any of the... Wow, the Cubs. Okay. And then we'll, we'll go through the rest just to see if he kind of snuck in anywhere. Doesn't look like it for like kind of the, the main awards that I would be looking at. So just a quick little peek to see how the Padres look. And I mean, the bullpen looks pretty good. Some aging arms in like Hendricks, Yates, Oberg. But, um, okay, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, the pitching staff still pretty young as well. And then when you look at the lineup, we'll take a look at the bench. Ryan McMahon got moved to the bench, so they got him from the Padre or the, the Rockies somehow. And then you guys can see the team here. Jake Cronenworth, I guess, has been sitting in the minors for a little bit. Gets called up and pops off. All right. Tatis is up to a 93, so I guess he kind of went down a little bit, actually. He's a little unhappy. So he's actually a 95. All right. He does 100% hit free agency this year. But um, his attributes still look really good. It looks like the hitting stats are really starting to go up. So it looks like maybe he's training his hitting. It looks like his fielding stats aren't being touched at all. You know, his speed. But it looks like maybe his training and his hitting are the ones that are really starting to go up now. 25 years old still. His career looks really good. I would say this is a pretty good season as well, even though the average is a little bit lower than normal. Same with the on-base percentage. Does strike out quite a bit, but I mean, good amount of doubles, good amount of home runs. The RBIs are still there. I mean, those are still very, very good stats, like for his career. 
no new quirks have been added but i mean the team whoa they've got heston kirstead as well wow this team has actually made a lot of moves so the team looks pretty solid tatis is actually having a pretty solid career as well just under a thousand hits like i mentioned last time so back-to-back -back appearances in the postseason so they're gonna be taking on their divisional rivals in the rockies so we might as well just kind of see how this plays out again why not it may go better than last year paddock's gonna take the mound again see if he can get his revenge and a double play to start it off there tatis doesn't get a hit in his first at bat which is disappointing to see but all right let's just kind of see how this goes hopefully the padres can move forward it maybe tempt tatis to stick around as dom nunez goes deep wow okay a walk for tatis and what i was trying to say before i got rudely interrupted by dom nunez was maybe the padres can make a push in the playoffs maybe tempt tatis to stick around but with a performance like this i don't know we're gonna bring in lucchese see if he can eat some innings maybe get the offense going since they only have two hits wow two hits that's not good at all and uh, it comes down to these last two innings bottom of the lineup here lucchese gets on definitely should have pinch hit there but we're gonna we're gonna pinch run for him with jorge mateo arias is up he's gonna walk Cronenworth with two outs gets out and uh, pitching change here. We're going to bring in Pagan. Hopefully he shuts the door. Hopefully he shuts the door. Herman Marquez. Wow. He's going to get on base. Tatis gets a home run. So he's one for three. But Herman Marquez extends the lead for the Rockies. That is a tough sight to see. A fly out. A single. Okay. Campusano gets out. And wow. That is... That is disappointing. That is really disappointing. So we're going to wait and see where Tatis ends up signing. The Red Sox defeat the Marlins. So Marlins back-to-back -back World Series. Maybe Tatis heads over to Miami. See if he can get a World Series there. So unfortunate. You know, back-to-back -back years getting knocked out in the wild card. Like I said, I'm going to see where this takes us. I'm just going to simulate, you know, a little bit into the future. See if Tatis does sign with the team or if he goes somewhere else. So I guess we just kind of skip through and see if, I guess we could stop simulating and just see if he re-signed with the team. And he did. He re-signed with the Padres on a big boy contract. It looks like six years. I'm not going to do the math, but you guys could, if you really wanted to average it out to what this all comes to per year, if it was like a, a straightforward rather than a backloaded contract. But it looks like a pretty big contract, probably close to around 30 million. For a year maybe like 29 or something like that but this is uh okay six years takes him to the age of 32 so he should still get one more big contract after that but it looks like he's staying in san diego let's see how the rest of this time here pans out so for the first time the padres won the division 89 and 73 i'm not gonna play any games i think i'm just gonna let them be simmed out because i feel like i'm bad luck you know, because the Padres are actually putting together a good team for once. Like, the CPU is actually getting involved in, like, making trades and free agency signings that are actually pretty good, which I'm, like, baffled by. You saw the rest of the league. We do have a league leader, Walker Bueller. So, the Padres picked up Walker Bueller in free agency, which I did notice during the time we were simming to see that Tatis signed with the team. Um, doesn't look like Tatis. Oh, there he is. Four doubles with 42 and then not for home runs or anything so awards did he get in the mix here okay so the mets did a little bit but doesn't look like what a name gene blunt 33 home runs wow 22 years old as well 100 rbis geez the marlins are just pumping out a solid team just getting those players holy cow so let's take a look at Tatis. Let's see how he did. He's actually moved to the four spot. Okay. Um, so it looks like Grisham's been moved somewhere else. All right. Okay. I'm intrigued. 274 for Tatis. 97 overall. 42 doubles. Pretty solid year. Like actually a really good year. You know, maybe the home runs dipped a little bit. Same with the RBIs. But averages there on base percentage. OPS. We're at seven years of MLB service time. So let's take a look at his war for his career. 33.2. 
all right so i mean he's actually having a really good career like it may not be like mind-blowing no mvps or anything like that but over a thousand hits still really young approaching 200 home runs you know like he's actually looking pretty good the padres have a really solid team and i mean look at his attributes insane a little bit down on the power side but the contacts up and everything's looking really solid so i mean this is a pretty good not only padres team but just career sim for fernando tatis jr so let's simulate the postseason see how the padres do they get swept by the mets padres just don't have the luck in the postseason so unfortunately for tatis maybe he's just cursed all right we're in the next year we won the division and as you can see we're actually in the world series it's crazy i'm even going to show you like it, it, it got wild like 11 7 against the mets you know took on the phillies and you look at this team and you you're, you're gonna see it's kind of weird because um just the rest of the league wasn't wasn't fantastic you know in comparison to what past years have been no hundred win teams and um no league leaders uh, i guess well this is for the postseason but for the league leaders it was like osuna with saves that was it didn't win any awards i'll show you guys um what we were kind of working with through the year um but like no player stood out on this team you, you're gonna take a look see how everything what well, i guess i can't really show you now but um but the trades that i said i was gonna make or changes i just went out and got monte harrison and jordan and wabu like that was it that was the only moves that i made i got rid of some of the older pitchers and like even in wagu um didn't even have a fantastic season he hit 232 and uh, monte harrison monte harrison was a little bit better 266 but like even that like it's it's nothing like they went crazy with it so tatis is in the world series he you know he had a good year he's been hitting around 300 for most of his career which is awesome to see and um we made the world series somehow like we got him to the world series simmed every single game got to this point and i thought this is a good point to jump in because now we could see how this is gonna pan out for tatis so let's just get into it they're gonna lose the first they're gonna lose the second as well and win that one lose that one uh oh this is this is heartbreak if they end up losing this oh man they do lose it so at least the padres did make the world series you know it it, it looks like pitching really let them down you know nine runs allowed 12 runs allowed you know it's just it just looks like the pitching kind of struggled a bit which is uh disappointing but maybe got an award a playoff mvp and i'm assuming he would have been a world series mvp um based on his stats right there yeah 397 seven home runs 16 rbis and uh, it looks like he had he had quite the the postseason yeah i mean look those stats are kind of putting him above the rest of the squad i think the other guy who the only other teammate who hit 300 was abrams who had what a third of the at bats and also soderstrom so i mean tatis definitely would have ran away with that that world series mvp so he's what 29 now so he's still got plenty left in the tank i'm excited to see where he goes that was year 10 in his career let's keep going Let's see how it continues to play out. They should have some money to play with now that we've opened up a little bit. Manny Machado is going to leave after this season as well because his contract expires. So building off a World Series appearance, let's see what these Padres can do with Tatis in the lineup. So far, his career has been good. It just hasn't been great. So hopefully we can get him a World Series title and let's continue with his career soon. All right, we're we're back-to-back -to -back World Series. I wasn't expecting this. Um, I actually wasn't recording again because no awards or anything for Tatis. I actually like was like, you know what? Let's just pause the recording. They won 94 games again. You know, like the team's 15th ranked. Like you see this. They're not the best team in baseball. They got just good pitching and good contact. I guess they're just getting on base at an elite level. Um, here's the team that the Padres have kind of built around so far. Not many changes. And then, um, of course, we'll take a quick look at how Tatis did through the year. And 98 overall. You know, morale's probably boosting him up a little bit. 94 overall in actuality. Morale's giving him a little bit of a boost. He's back up to, like, full quirks. And then statistics for the season, you guys can see this as well. Like, he's still hitting at a really good level. 
kind of capping around the mid 20s for home runs hasn't really ever eclipsed 100 rbis i think it was just once which is pretty disappointing to see hits a ton of doubles though like that's insane but it looks like he's gonna hit 300 home runs next season he's gonna be approaching that 2000 hit mark it's gonna be kind of close to see if he can get to that 3000 hit mark because like yeah he's averaging around 160 170 hits a season but um you know he's got a couple years left on his contract which i mean i i think he should hit close to 3000 hits but i mean it's it's gonna be tough to see if he hits that so it'll be interesting his hitting stats definitely starting to like kind of fluctuate here and there um but not as good as what he's been i mean he's still 30 like he's still pretty young um a notable player was heston kerset at 30 years old wow um we can take a look at the league really quick just so you guys can see the awards for like mvps and stuff you can see like pete alonzo won it yelich won it you can see like julio rodriguez is kind of in the mix drew waters devers correa is even at the age of what 34 which is wild um but you guys can kind of see the other players in the league as well just so you can guys can get an idea of what's going on throughout these years because we're in the year 2029 so it kind of gives you a little bit of a, a kind of what's going on throughout the league so we're taking on the orioles wow okay they're gonna lose the first they're gonna win the second win this one and then they're one game away so let's let's hop into it let's see how this plays out for tatis one game away one game away from a world series they're gonna go to adolfo osuna who i'm assuming is a a draft drafted player only 23 okay so yeah a youngster and this is the lineup for them josh bell on the padres really and then drew waters goes deep for the orioles wow okay that's you hate to see it tatis fielder's choice nothing happens there and the orioles look like they got a lot of young like players obviously it's not young anymore but younger players who have just developed into really good players like herrar Encarnacion, drew waters chris shaw he's got to be all really old at this point and then you know just looking at the rest of the team interesting adam hall they've got burling who looks like a drafted player hits a home run they've got quintero who i know is a cubs prospect g1 bay what a name by the way tatis not having a, a good day at the plate today and it's still three nothing only one hit for the padres that's super disappointing to see taking out the pitcher we're gonna go to bueller out of the bullpen and he gets out of that jam there might be only one inning shane bieber's holding us down like nothing is happening here and um i'm gonna try to get one more inning out of bueller just to be safe with it boom we got that cursed out bell out soderstrom out super disappointing and uh i mean it's the eighth you gotta do something here pinch it obviously we're gonna go to who is it jorge bonifacio is an 87 what what world are we living in that jorge bonifacio is an 87 overall there, there's just no that just doesn't make any sense at all who hits righties the best is what i'm trying to get at here what about cj abrams yes cj abrams get on base boom brings in the run it's three to one now and out and then Monte Harrison gets out as well. So let's go to the bullpen. Um, maybe Osuna. One, two, three, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, Tatis, get this rally started. Okay, or not. He goes over in a crucial game. And then they lose three to two because a runner was thrown out going home. That is sadness all wrapped up in a nutshell right there. So here we go. 3-2 in the series still got a little flexibility but we're gonna hop into this one as well hopefully they can get the win the ace Mackenzie Gore is on the mound for them CJ Abrams has taken over Tatis is at second okay he walks he's gonna score thanks to Kerstad double and um, I'm just I'm still baffled by Bonifacio being what was it like an 84 87 overall insane insane Manuel Bautista is on the mound for them who looks to be what a 25 year old pretty good season so far okay okay alrighty so tie ball game super disappointing runner thrown out going home that is big 
Tatis is up, could definitely open up this game, and he grounds out. Ooh, he's been struggling the last couple days. So still 1-1. One, one. Okay, I like to see this. Abrams, nothing. Maybe Abrams brings in the run again. Arias, Tatis strikes out. What is with Tatis right now? Definitely not his best self. Oviedo's going to come in. He allows the tying run. And then he lets... Oh, no. He gives up the lead? That's not good. That's not good at all. All right, a couple lefties coming up. Let's go to Matt Strom. And it comes down to this inning. Can the Padres do something? A single, a strikeout, and then a double play to end it. Wow. This is not looking good for them. Last game, what can happen here? So, they got to win. They can't throw away this victory. There's no way they can do it. Come on. Just blow it open early. Tati struck out anyway, so he is having an abysmal abysmal world series like he's been like what one for his last like eight or something which is insane especially when they needed the team when he needs like the team needs him to do well they just go he just struggles oh for two today kirstead gets it to a tie ball game yikes not good at all stolen base it's three to two mm, not what you like to see and then a double play for tatis oh it's 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 not looking good not looking good at all melvin garcia comes in weathers another run comes in four to two game and uh uh-oh it's it's just it looks like they're gonna throw away that lead they had fielder's choice for tatis and then runner thrown out going home oh man time's running out like this is this is crunch time right here they go one two three there Osuna gives him another shutout inning. It comes down to this. Dewell Lugo versus the lefty. He walks. Do they have any speedsters on the base paths? I don't think they do. Unless this... Yeah, there's no speed. All right. CJ Abrams. Fielder's choice. Hate to see it. Arias. Wow. Wow. Throw away 3-1 lead. Playoff MVP, Monte Harrison. And what a time to just absolutely choke in the postseason. In the World Series. Those last few games. Tatis went, what, 1 for 12 or 1 for 3? Not 1 for 3. He had like 1 or 2 hits throughout that entire thing. And just went over for the rest of that series. Super disappointing not clutch and you hate to see it what a time to just absolutely choke in your career back-to-back -back world series just can't deliver this time and uh, unfortunately just no world series title for him entering the last year of his contract we'll see how it goes if not we'll check in see where he if he changes teams if he stays with the padres we're gonna see how it plays out see you guys in a bit all right so about to hit the regular season we're gonna take a look and see if tatis stayed with the padres or not because i'm interested to see how that plays out and he did he did okay so it looks like he wants to stay in san diego for the entirety of his career we'll take a look at the contract average is about to goes up about what four million each year so you're probably sitting around what 28 million a season for the next four or five years or five years probably 28 million I think that's what that average is out to so okay interesting so we're taking a look here probably should hit 2,000 hits this season over the 300 hit mark so it'll be interesting to see how these next six years or next five years plays out for Tatis because he's already starting to kind of slowly decrease in rating he's down to a 93 overall and um, still got all those quirks you know morales keeping him up to about a 95 but um, when you look at his attributes, you can see the contact is slowly going down versus lefties. The power is starting to decrease. The fielding stats haven't moved at all. Like the attributes for fielding haven't moved. I think his speed maybe has come down a little bit. But it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. All right. We're in the year before. I think this is the year before his contract runs out. The Padres won the NLCS, taking on the Mariners of the Indians in the World Series. 
and they just had a reverse sweep on the Reds. Like, that is awesome to see. They won the wild card against the Rockies. They beat the Giants as well. And um, things are looking, looking pretty good. You know, you really don't know any of these names. I mean, maybe Tristan McKenzie, Mackenzie Gore. Um, you got Luis Patino. But outside of that, it's like basically all regen players. JT Jin, no, JT Gin, Jin. I always forget how to say that last name. But a lot of these guys are like just prospects that have been drafted and finally started to hit their peak in their career. So Tatis Jr. is still holding his overall. He's 93 overall through the postseason, though. It's kind of struggling. But um, you guys can see his attributes here at the age of 35 years old starting to slowly fall off um he had a little bit of a power resurgence in his career where his power numbers were like his power versus righties was up to like the high 70s all of a sudden for the last couple years but yeah the year before his contract does expire and um you can see he's an 89 overall now so he's kind of back to where we started this whole career sim quirks he's still holding on to a majority of them and these are his statistics so far. So like, like I said, he had a little bit of a, a resurgence of power. He's still cranking out doubles. He led the league in doubles this year. And um, he's hitting at a really good level. Even the, the strikeouts were down this season and had a pretty good number of walks. So home runs, he's at 415. Hits, 2500. And um, it's interesting to see how this plays out. But like I wanted, uh, the, main, the main point here we're approaching a World Series. Maybe the last chance for him to win a World Series. Can he do it? Can the Padres clutch it up? Boom. They do. it. And I didn't want to get involved this time. I wanted the Padres to do it. And let's take a little peek. See how Tatis finished out the postseason. 259, two home runs, nine RBIs. Unfortunately, not going to give him any sort of MVPs or anything like that. It's going to be Heston Kersad and Rory Schultz who take that, those accolades. But um, you know what? It finally happened. It only took like 47 years, it feels like. But Tatis finally gets that act. And this is actually what? His second accolade? He's had one playoff MVP. And now he has a World Series title to his name. Which, oh man, that's got to be huge. I wish here you could have like a like a little accolade section or like an award section after the quirks where you could keep track of you know all star are all star appearances world series titles or mvp awards i don't i don't need to know how many times they appeared in the world series or how many times they you know they made the postseason but at least let me see how many mvps they had how many you know uh, gold gloves or things like that that would be really cool to see how many times they won the world series just things like that that would be really awesome because even if you go to the statistic the statistics area really you can only see if like individual stats were ch like changed so like you know you're not you're not really seeing anything here save streak i guess there's a new one from josh taylor in 2025 but outside of that, there's really no other like awards or records that you can really see that are changing personally. I mean, you know what I'm trying to say? I just wish you could have like a little bit more in-depth stat tracker because like you can see team rankings, you can go through each team and see their, their stats or you can go through achievements, but that's like the team achievements, you know? And that's not, that, that doesn't help me out. I don't see what, a person is able to do so unfortunately that's something that's not enfranchised but there we go alrighty so year 2036 and um, I've already looked I've already seen got some sad news Tatis has uh, not returned to San Diego and instead has taken his talents to Boston where he's gonna slot in at shortstop which is weird because they have a 90 overall. They have an 84 overall. What are they what are they doing trying to get Tatis? Like this 90 overall. I mean, it hasn't been fantastic, but it's still 90 overall. All right, so we're in the year 2037. And you're probably thinking, well, 
Last year, Tatis was on the Red Sox, and the Red Sox made the postseason. They got knocked out in the first round. I got a little bit of a twist in the tail. Tatis is in the World Series right now, and you're probably thinking, well, which team is he on? The White Sox or the Brewers? Let's take a little peek, because, wow, I did not expect that at all. We're going to go to the White Sox, and we have a DH, Fernando Tatis Jr., 78 overall. And uh, <laughs> he's in the World Series at the ripe age of 38 years old. He played 136 games with the Red Sox, 138 with the White Sox. So he's just changing his sock color at this point. And, I mean, he's still having a pretty solid season. And look at those career totals. 3,000 hits. He played a lot more games than I anticipated, especially for only being in the right-handed lineups for DH and also non-DH. So I guess he's going to face a majority of right-handed hitters anyways, or right-handed pitchers anyways. So it works out in his favor, but wow, insane. He clips the 3,000 hit mark. He's approaching 500 home runs, 23 away. Maybe one more year. We'll have to wait and see, but we're here. We're checking out how this series is going to work with the, the White Sox. Where are they? Here we go. So let's take a look. And they're up 2-1. 2-2. 3-2. 3-3. Two two, and they end up winning a World Series. So to win his second World Series of his career, Fernando Tatis Jr. had to leave. And he had to go to the Chicago White Sox. So it doesn't look like he did too great from, you know, the numbers that we saw. 241, four home runs, 11 RBIs. But that's number two in the books for Tatis. He's got a second World Series. And we'll have to wait and see. 38 years old. I definitely expect him to keep dropping in overall as well. And, you know, he's 75 overall. You know, his quirks are starting to go away. His attributes are starting to drop. But if he can get 23 more home runs, I, I mean, that's that's a wild career for the shortstop. So let's continue going forward. I think we're just going to wait till he retires at this point. I just thought it was pretty cool that he made the World Series with the new team. And I wanted to show you that. Alrighty, 2044. And it is finally time where Tatis Jr. has retired. We've hit that point. So 46 years old. 46 was in the league for 21 years he's 54 overall and i mean yeah i think it was definitely time to hang up the cleats so let's take a look because he played with a couple teams after you know the white Sox. he had the blue jays the tigers um i signed him in 2041 to see if we could get him to a certain stat that you may have not noticed yet but then he sat out a couple more seasons and the cpu immediately threw him into the minors anyways so Hit total, 3183, 710 doubles, 110 triples, and 496 home runs. Ooh, so close. And that's why I signed him in 2041, hoping that we could get number 500 and just fell a little bit short. You know, 1,642 RBIs, a career average of 282, 362 on base percentage. A slugging percentage of 496, OPS at five, or 858, and well, let's take a look at this war for his career. Where is it? Here it is. 100.2. 100.2. Absolutely insane career. Now let's take a look at the Hall of Fame inductees, Fernando Tatis Jr. There he is. There it is. So... Julio Rodriguez also had a pretty good career there. Holy cow. That's actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, Tatis, absolutely insane. That's going to wrap it up with two World Series and a playoff MVP award. And then, um, so two World Series wins. So he's got two rings. And then a playoff MVP was really the only accolade that he won, which is kind of wild because I think in real life, he's definitely going to have maybe an mvp you know maybe a couple gold gloves or a silver slugger or something like that because one he knows how to hit two he's got a phenomenal glove i definitely think he's going to lead the league in a few st stats as well he's going to go down as one of the better players in baseball he's got the talent to do it and he's showing it right now so that is the tatis junior career sim a little bit more in depth than normal 
let me know what you guys think. Do you guys want to see some more things like this? Do you want me to go a little bit more in depth? If you want to see some other things, let me know how you'd like to see these going forward. And of course, with the trade deadline rapidly coming to a close, I will definitely bring out some trade rebuilds soon. That's about it, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, hit a like on the video. Consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. And of course, get in the comment section. That's about it, guys. I'm going to leave you with two videos on screen now. Go and give them a watch if you haven't yet. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.